When this war began, we knew that air power would be one of the most important factors in deciding the issue. We knew it, and the enemy knew it. It was a question of who could build up the largest air force and maintain it, not only to give support to our armies and navies, but also as an individual fighting arm of deadly power. The race was on. To build up air superiority meant, first of all, production. The designing and building of new aircraft that would fly further and faster and carry more bombs and guns than those of the enemy. It meant, too, that we had to train men to fly and service these aircraft. Germany won the first lap. In the second lap, air power helped to win the Battle of Britain. Now the last lap is just beginning. We have the planes, but we need the men. In building up our air power, New Zealanders have already done their share. They fought in the Battle of Britain, they fought in the skies over Africa, and today they are flying some of the aircraft that are helping to win the Battle of Europe. From New Zealand have come fighter and bomber pilots, navigators, bomb aimers, air gunners, radio operators, and technical personnel who have earned a reputation for skill and daring. In the Battle of the Pacific, men of the Royal New Zealand Air Force have already done their share of blasting Jap bases and beating the nips out of the sky. They have learned to fight under conditions that are far from ideal, living on bases in the sticky, clammy heat of the tropics. But they're tough and well-trained, and nothing has stopped them. In combat flying, in reconnaissance flying, in guarding vital supply lines, New Zealanders have earned a reputation that's known all over the world but the Allied nations haven't won the war yet. We have to keep on beating the Nazis and the Japs in the air. We have to keep on guarding our supply lines and keeping the sea lanes open for our armies and our ships and our supplies of war. In the production of aircraft, we are winning out. But the more aircraft we have, and we will have them, the more men we must have. We need those young men now because it takes time to train them. We are looking to all young men between the ages of 18 and 31 to help us. And if you can help, if it sounds like your job, well, I ask you to join up right away.